Hello, Facebook Live. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm like two feet away from my laptop, just set up super casual in my um, kitchen, and we don't have a fancy kitchen, and you can see all the magnets on my fridge, and hopefully no dirty dishes. But um, I talked about how I make um, my own kombucha. I do this once a week and it's super easy guys. It's super simple and I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a live video showing you how easy it is. Okay, so maybe you've tried kombucha, maybe you haven't and what it is is it is a fermented tea beverage and it has probiotics to um, nourish your gut. There's a lot of amazing benefits of having probiotics in your system and feeding your gut is one of the biggest reasons to do probiotics. Your gut is 90% of your immune system. So if you are feeding your gut, you're going to be protecting your immune system. So super important reason to be doing probiotics. Now, Kombucha has a certain amount of probiotics. If you have a compromised immune system or there's something that you need to do to, to build your immune system up in a drastic way, I wouldn't suggest kombucha being your one and only go-to um, because it, there are a certain amount of live cultures in there for you, but not to the extent that you really need. So for our family, we take a probiotic supplement to fortify our gut and help our immune system. And kombucha is just for fun. It's delicious. It's homemade. It's cheap. And we can make different flavors and stuff. So anyway, so that's my pitch on maybe why you might want to try it. If you haven't, you can pick it up at a whole, a whole Foods. or They're pretty much sold wherever at this point. You buy them in little glass bottles. And they're all different flavors. They're really super yummy. So how do you make kombucha? Okay, first off, the biggest thing that you need is a SCOBY. So do not be scared by this. My husband is totally afraid of SCOBYs. So this, this one's ready for me to add fresh tea. So inside is a SCOBY. So I'm going to lift it out for you and let you see what a SCOBY looks like. I have washed my hands. You never, ever want to touch a SCOBY with if you've got any kind of food oils or anything else on your hands because it is a live active bacteria so it's this little thing they kind of some people call it a mushroom some people call it um the mother if you've ever heard of things like that but this is a scoby culture and it kind of turns this white color the newest top layers are more clear it kind of comes, it builds itself into layers. They call them a, a SCOBY. Some of the older layers are darker because of the tea. Um, yeah, this big jar, Lacey, that's a good question. I bought this at Kmart, honestly. It's a two-gallon jar, and it comes with a little spigot. So when I finish making my kombucha, all I have to do is fill up my smaller things, and I use these sizes to fill up at the end. So SCOBY the thing that I was holding up, is an acronym, actually. It stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, SCOBY. So it's kind of creepy, maybe, if you've never seen them before, but it's a fascinating process that these um, little bacteria and yeast mushrooms, if you want to call it that, will eat sugar, and its byproduct is probiotics so it's incredibly helpful for the body there's it's a natural process in fact if you enjoy apple cider vinegar so this is just an o, o organics raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar you'll read on here that it says raw unfiltered with the mother so you can see that on most apple cider vinegars they talk about the mother so when they're talking about the mother, they're really talking about a SCOBY. So this is a natural process that they use in apple cider vinegar. Um, the difference with making apple cider vinegar is they use a different base than with kombucha. Kombucha uses a tea base. Now you can use three different types of tea when you make kombucha. You can, I personally recommend using organic teas. 
So I either buy, I just want to see what's on sale and what I like, but this is just a regular plain black organic tea. This is a pretty good one. You can use organic green teas, black teas, or if you can find them, a nice organic rooibos tea. So this is another one that I used. You can combine different flavors of tea. You could do like two bags of green and two bags of black. Kind of mix it up and see what you like the best. So I usually just change it up every time I make kombucha. So sometimes I do green tea. Sometimes I do black tea, sometimes I combine them. It's just kind of whatever mood I'm in. So that's what the base of kombucha is, tea. So the first thing you want to do is boil water. I actually boiled it this morning. I used a big stock pot. I filled it full of water, and I boiled it. Once it came to a boil, I removed it from the heat, and I placed four tea bags in. Now, how much tea you add will depend on how big of a vessel you have that you're making tea. So this is about two plus gallons. So it's, I think it's when you get to the curve, it adds a little bit more than two gallons. But it's basically, I don't fill it beyond the two gallon mark. So four bags of tea for about two gallons of kombucha. So you can see how it's super cheap. Water. You use filtered water, you don't have to use special distilled water, but you don't want to use tap water because of just the junk that's in our water. So I recommend if you have a good water filter, that's what you're going to want to do. So filtered water, boil, four or so bags of tea, depending on the size of kombucha that you're making. Make sure that you have a nice healthy SCOBY. You can buy these online. They're Yes, the vessel too, but the SCOBY, you can buy them in health food stores. There's a lot of websites online that will sell them to you and with instructions on how to get them going. Or find a friend who's willing to share a SCOBY with you. These grow. So every time I make a batch of, of kombucha, I get another layer of SCOBY that I can share with somebody else. And typically what I would do is if somebody were going to get a SCOBY from me is I just find a small little jar, stick a little bit of starter liquid, and they get a tiny little SCOBY. And you can start with any kind of SCOBY that you want. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm happy to share with you, Lacey. We'll message later and I can bring you a SCOBY to church and we'll figure out how to meet up. So anyway, these little SCOBYs will grow to whatever size vessel you put them in. So this one has been in this little jar for a while, and you see it's the size of the jar. Oops, it's got a little older one hanging on to the bottom here. But this is all that it is. It's this little healthy bacteria, um, you know, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. And that is critical because you can't make kombucha without a SCOBY. Then you're going to need that starter liquid. So whoever you buy it from or whoever shares with you will be sharing with you at least a cup or half a cup, depending on what size you're doing, of starter kombucha liquid. So I would add, in my big jug, you can see that there's already some liquid in here. When I filled up my little vessels, I left some at the bottom to be my starter liquid for my new batch. So I've got my starter liquid. I've got my SCOBY, I've got my tea all brewed up, and the final step that it requires is at least, because of my size, a cup of sugar. Now the sugar doesn't matter what kind of sugar, it is not going to sweeten your tea and give you the sugar, it is fuel for your SCOBY. The SCOBY eats the sugar, and its byproduct is the probiotics. <laughs> so don't worry about like, oh no, it's a sugary beverage. It's not. It, you add the sugar in for the SCOBY. So in a batch this size, I vary between maybe a cup to a cup and a half, sometimes two cups of sugar. There's no way to get this wrong as long as there's some sugar for the SCOBY to eat. So I dissolve it into my tea and I wait for my tea to come all the way down to room temperature. This is really important 
because you can kind of cook your SCOBY on accident if you add in hot tea. So you don't want to do that. You just want to boil up some hot, uh, some tea, add the sugar, let it dissolve, and then I'm going to try to pour a little in here. Woo! I add it in once it's room temperature. So I kind of get a couple of drips. But I can smell the sugar. The sugar is real strong at this point because it just got dissolved into my kombucha. It's brand new. So that's one of the key ways to find out if your kombucha is ready, is does it still taste sugary sweet? If it's not sugary sweet, it's ready. So there are three stages of kombucha. Too sweet, you can taste the sugar, it's not ready. Just right, and you can stop it at whatever flavor you like. Maybe you want it a little more sweet, or if you keep going, you're gonna start getting a vinegar type taste just like you would with apple cider. So now you can see, if I can lift this, ooh, that was probably about a gallon. Once I boiled, oh, this direction, I boiled up my water and added some tea bags and sugar and I filled it up. Well now I would have to bring that up. I would just add some more filtered water up to the rim. And the last thing I do is cover it, and I just took dishcloth. If you have those real thin cotton dishcloths, I had a big one, and I cut it into small pieces. And all you do is take a rub plain, whoop, I just shot that across the room. <laughs> we'll pick a new one. Pick a plain rubber band, and you secure the cheesecloth or paper, you know, like I said, linen um, cloth to the top of your jug. Now this is important because just like your SCOBY needs sugar to grow, it also needs air. So if you have a lid that's sealed on there, your SCOBY won't get any air. If you have it completely open, you will attract fruit flies. So fruit flies, as you know, are attracted to the smell of rotting and decaying fruit. So if you've got bananas that are overripe or tomatoes or something like that, you'll notice an infestation of fruit flies. Rotting fruit gives off a kind of a vinegar-esque smell, and that's what the fruit flies are attracted to. And as you guessed, since the process can basically take you to a type of vinegar, your kombucha could or will attract fruit flies if you have any in your house. So that's the other important thing of securing it nice and tight with the rubber band but the cloth for air. So that's the kind of basic practices of kombucha is people just cover it with the cloth and there's nothing special about my cloth although it is a tight weave so it keeps them out. Okay so once your jug is full you have to wait and wait. Now, at a jug this size, it takes about one week for my kombucha to mature and be ready to drink. Um, I just kind of test it. I, I'll mark it with a post-it note, so I'll say like Saturday, and so maybe Friday I'll check it, and then um, maybe, you know, maybe I'll use it on Saturday again or Sunday. It's really forgiving. So it's not like you're going to miss the day and then it's going to be disgusting after that because there's some ways to sweeten up, which I'll show you in just a second. But the really interesting thing about kombucha is that it will mature faster in hot weather. So during the summer, your kombucha batches will go really fast, like four or five days. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with it. In the winter, especially if you live in a really cold climate, your kombucha will take forever to mature. It prefers like a 70 degree weather. So um, don't make sure that, you know, if you are kind of, I know we tend to try to really help our budget by not running the AC super cold in the summer. So our house will be pretty warm and our kombucha will get ready so quick. But on the other side, we're drinking a lot of fluid, so we go through our kombucha fast also because it's a nice, cool summer beverage, and I'm happy to give it to me, my husband, and kids all day long, and so we drink it up really fast. 
people who live in the Midwest, which I don't have a ton of friends in the Midwest, but I have some, if you're new to kombucha, you might want to invest in a kombucha belt. So they make this little device. I don't have it. I don't need it. Current temperature out there is 57 degrees, and so it's not cold here. They put a heater belt around their device or um, jar, and it is like a little heater, like a heating blanket for your kombucha to keep it at a steady temperature so it won't go to freezing or it will, you know, because that would slow down the whole process. So that's super interesting if you live in a cold climate. So that is, now I've filled up my jug. Hypothetically, it's been maturing for a week. Now what can you do? You've tasted your kombucha. You love the flavor. It's not too sour. It's not tasting like sugar, which means it's ready. What do you do next? Well, you have two options. You can drink it as is, and it's delicious. Plain kombucha is amazing. Or you can add flavors. So what I did when I was buying supplies is I would go to the store. We have a grocery outlet around the corner. And I was walking through the aisles one day, and I saw these um, jars or bottles of moonshine iced tea. Well, I looked at the label, and I was like, 30 grams of sugar? There's no way on earth I'm going to give my kids this, okay? It's way too much sugar. I'm not going to drink that myself. I don't need that much sugar in my body. But I loved these bottles. And they were super cheap because they were at Grocery Outlet, and I had already been searching online for kombucha bottles. And they were, I think they're like a dollar each or a dollar fifty each online and these were like 25 cents so I looked like a crazy person but I bought a whole big thing of them took them home I opened them up and dumped them out Ooh, this one's wet um, I dumped them out because I wasn't gonna I didn't need them for the tea I wanted them for the bottles so I have a whole bunch of bottles which is a great thing to do so if you're on a budget and you want to do this I recommend the same thing go to grocery outlet Go to wherever kind of cheap store you've got in your town. Look for some really cheap. But the biggest thing you want is you want it to be a really sturdy, thick glass. So um, I'll tell you why in a second. So what you will do to make flavors, this is called the second brew. So I would start with about an inch, maybe, yeah, about an inch of a fruit juice. I prefer to buy organic juices. So I'm thinking, you know, I put all this work into making this stuff from home. I'm not going to just dump in there any old juice. I want it to be something high quality, especially organic. So I'm not adding pesticides or something to my kombucha. So um, same thing, it like, depends on where I go. This is a, I washed it out. I keep a lot of my bottles now just in case I'm going to use them for putting kombucha in later. But this is Trader Joe's. Certified Organic Concord Grape Juice. So anytime I'm out and about and I'm looking for juices, I just keep my eyes peeled. What's their deal on organic juice? I've bought organic juice at Trader Joe's, Grocery Outlet, Safeway, Costco, doesn't really matter. Um, berry juices are the best. The um, flavors that we've tried have been mango, grape, apple, blueberry, raspberry and my favorite one which was pretty exciting I think I posted a couple weeks ago is I put fresh sprigs of mint into each of my kombucha bottles and then filled them with plain kombucha and then it was like mint flavor it was amazing so that one I totally recommend a flavor I would not recommend trying is pineapple so I don't know why but they because I said that this process could take it to like a vinegar, a little bit of an acidic taste. Adding an acidic fruit in there was like overkill. It was so strong and it was disgusting and my kids wouldn't drink it and eventually I was like, how are we gonna use this up? Nobody likes it. So I would recommend avoid pineapple juice, but experiment. But definitely I would say start stay in the berry family. Um, they're really mellow and they seem to do well in kombucha. So probably not orange juice lemon, lime, or pineapple, because it just seems like too much acid. Okay, so you add about an inch of fruit juice. 
Then you fill the rest up with kombucha. So this is one I did a couple hours ago. Um, I started with about an inch and I filled it up so there's a little bit of headroom. And that's because as the kombucha is brewing for a second brew, pressure starts to build. That's another good way to know if your kombucha is done for its second brew is if you pop the lid and you hear that like, you know, like when you get a new bottle of soda, which we don't drink anymore. But anyway, that little carbonation pop. Um, kombucha creates its own carbonation, which is kind of fun, but it's a healthy probiotic type carbonation and not some kind of chemical carbonation. So that's awesome. Um, oh, elderberry syrup and ginger. Oh, absolutely. You could add, you could add ginger. Yeah, elderberry would be great. Um, there's, yeah, so it's kind of fun. It's really kind of cool if you look on blogs and check out flavors of other people do. There are tons of flavors. It's just amazing. So anyway, um, now you've got your second brew. This requires at least two days, maybe three, on the shelf. So don't pop it in the fridge just yet. You've added your juice. But you're adding a little more sugar back into your kombucha because juice is naturally high in fruit sugar, you know, naturally derived. So this thing of, oh, that's the pineapple juice, gross. We, I saw the can, it was not a good mix. Okay, so if you think of this Concord grape juice, it has 39 grams of sugar. Now, you know, this is an organic, certified organic. They did not add sugar to this. That's 39 grams of naturally derived from the fruit, high sugar fruit. So by adding that fruit juice in, it's giving that probiotic something else to feed on. So first time around, we gave it a cup of regular sugar. And the second time around, it's going to eat the sugars in the juice. So by setting it on the shelf for about three days, the kombucha, the probiotics, will eat the sugars and leave you with just the fruit flavor. So that's really incredible, and it kind of gives us a way to drink our juice without all the sugar, so yay. Then you take it out of your cupboard. Some people in some places, you might need to burp your bottles before you put them in the fridge. Now this has happened, and the reason why a while ago I told you look for jars that have a real thick glass. The pressure will build and it has happened that their kombucha will explode in their cabinets or wherever you store your kombucha. It's best to put it in a dark place, but as long as it's not in direct sunlight, that would harm the SCOBY. So if you've got a dark corner in your kitchen, my kitchen is fairly dark and little, but there wasn't enough counter space for it. So I actually have a pantry with um, different shelves in it, and I just, they're adjustable shelves, so I was able to just make a shelf that was tall enough to fit my two-gallon jug. So it's in the cupboard, but it's still got air. We go in and out of our pantry, so it gets plenty of oxygen, but it's staying away from the light. I do the same thing with the second brew of kombucha with its flavor. I leave it in the cupboard two to three days. I personally don't burp them before they go in the fridge. Maybe I should, but I don't call it lazy. I don't know. You can also fill up the big ones. So that's why I do keep these bigger jugs. I have some that are even larger than that. I just add more juice at the bottom so that the ratio is sort of the same. And I fill it up, and I kind of use that instead of these individual servings, I'll use this for my kids, and I'll pour them little cups, give everybody a little bit kombucha, and we're ready to go. So, what have I missed? Scobies. Oh, you can kind of keep a scoby happy for a really long time. Honestly, these little ones have been in this jar. I've got three of them here. Oh, my gosh. This one is huge, guys. Look how big this, this scoby gets. And I totally ignored this for like months and months. It's massive. So I can peel these apart and you could start a whole new batch of kombucha with each of these layers. It's crazy. So Lacey's asking about the garage. Would it be good to put it in the garage? It would depend on how the temperature is in your garage. Here in California in the winter, 
it would be okay, but it would be a little cool. Kombucha kind of likes it between that 70 degree range. So right now with, you know, it being 57 outside, it's a little cool. It might take your kombucha longer to mature. Um, if your house gets really hot, like I said in the summer, that a garage would be a horrible place for it. It would probably either kill your SCOBY or you'd have so much kombucha because things would be happening like within two days and you're, you wouldn't be able to keep up with that. It takes our family a week to drink two gallons and that's five of us. I drink one a day, my husband drinks one a day and then I'll pour out um, at least a cup each for my kids and they use the little, we use glass. In fact, that's kind of a, pro, um, a quickie thing for for your kids, if they are able, friends, please eliminate plastic as much as you can from your kids. Just the toxins that are leached into our foods from plastic is completely scary. It's terrifying. And I used to be like, I had little plastic bowls and little plastic spoons and little plastic cups because you think you're keeping your kids safe and that's totally normal. That's what we were taught. But learning more about the toxins that leach into our food via plastic, I totally would encourage you to make the switch as soon as they are able. We bought these little mason jar cups, and they are stainless steel straws. So there's no plastic. There's no toxins being leached into their stuff. They actually keep these on the counter right next to the water filter and my kids drink water all day long because it's available and they can just fill up and drink all day long. So that was just a little side note plug is please, once you're able, and I know some of the little ones, you know, it's, it's pointless, you can't do it yet and I totally understand, but as soon as they are able, and sometimes you'll be surprised, I think we switched to glass when my daughter was four. And she did amazing, especially the ones that have a little handle on them. I mean, I don't let her walk around the house with them. They go from the counter to the table and back again. So, and then if they spill it, oh well, it's water. So we don't give our kids soda and, and juice and stuff like that. So anyway, that's a little side note plug for glass. <laughs> also, I would recommend if you're storing hot foods, Get rid of your Tupperware, um, same reason you're putting hot food into your Tupperware and storing it in the fridge. Toxins are gonna leach out of the plastic into your leftovers if you're heating them up in the microwave that way as well, same thing. So our family switched to all glass stuff. In fact, I'll just grab one. Um, here they are. We use, this is Pyrex. They come with the little lids. So the lids I care less about because the food's not sitting on it. But switch, if you can, to glass. I mean, you know, go back to the old days. <laughs> There's a reason why they did it. It's They last longer. They're healthier for you. So, okay. So we talked about sugar. I, think, I don't know if I mentioned this. The cup of sugar. Does the type of sugar you use in your kombucha matter? No. Why? Because the SCOBY's eating it you can use just plain old cheap sugar. You don't have to spend a lot of money to buy organic sugar because it's gonna be eaten by the SCOBY and there's really nothing, it's, you know, it's just cheap sugar. They said the better it dissolves, the easier it'll be for your SCOBY to eat and that's important. Um, sometimes I use like a plastic funnel if for the juice, that's actually, what I always use is I'll put a little plastic funnel when I fill up about an inch of juice. You could do the same thing when you're filling your bottles. If you don't buy a SCOBY, um, like a uh, kombucha bottle that has a spigot on it, spigot's optional. They really don't make spigots unless you have a pretty big jug. So this is a glass two-gallon jug. And that's about it. So I don't know if there was any questions that I missed on here. Let me just scroll down. Nope, that looks like I got it. So thanks for watching and hopefully you learned something and I can link you to a couple of websites that tell the same stuff. Could give you other recipes on flavors and that's about it. So I'm not a professional. I've been doing this for about a year and I love it and it's easy and it's cheap. And like I said, what did it cost me? Four tea bags and a cup of sugar and some filtered water at home. And it makes about uh, 13 of these plus a couple of these big ones. 
And if you were to buy this at a store, these would be like $4 each. Whereas if I made it at home, I mean, I haven't done the math, guys, but what is this, like five cents? <laughs> so totally worth it. So anyway, that was it. All right, bye, guys.